Good morning, good morning. Bit of a grey day today. It's going to be mixed weather today. There's going to be patches of sunshine, maybe patches of rain. There was threats of a typhoon a couple of days ago, but it dissolved into one of those. What is it? Just a low pressure, rainy area. Quiet this morning. Look at this. Nobody's in sight. It's a quiet time in Asakusa this morning. <laughs> We're in June. The rainy season will be here any minute now. It's been raining on and off the last few days, but it hasn't been really a rainy season mood. That's when the, the air movement, instead of coming from Asia, the air movement comes from the south, from the Pacific, and it's a wet, monsoony type stuff. You get up in the morning and everything's wet. We haven't got there yet, not here in Tokyo, maybe down in Kyushu or somewhere, but not in Tokyo. Rainy season isn't just about rain, it's about constant damp, the presence of everything. Everything you pick up, every piece of paper is wet. But we're still, I guess, we're still a few days away from it, or a week away from it, who knows. Okay, good morning, good morning, good morning. The job today is going to be, you know where we're at. We're going to finish off that block we did the other day. I did one, I did one corner of it, and now we're going to get some persuading done and get this block cleared off. It's possible we'll finish this in the stream today. <laughs> if we do, I'll just move on to the next one. Paper's out. Two printers are here today. Day chan she's printing the night scene, the Hiroshi Yoshida pair of boats. She's doing the night scene on that. And she discovered something interesting yesterday. The sample picture on our website and in my folder of prints that I have here shows a certain tone and sequence of colors. But the sample book that we've been giving to the printers shows one block not being used. And she's asked me, Dave, what's the real way to do this? And I had to hum and haw and hum and haw. It's, they wander, you know, no matter how carefully you try and keep the printers and our samples, no matter how carefully we try and make them exactly always the same, they wander. They wander. So it's good every once in a while go back to something, to a print that you made a while ago, five years ago, ten years ago, and see the difference. Someone says, is the higher humidity a big issue with us? Absolutely, absolutely. I know the printers, you know, you, you get a stack of paper. This is, this is not printing paper, but when you've got your stack of paper ready for printing, we, of course, we have to moisten it ready to be printed. We can't print on, on dry paper. It's got to be moistened. And how much moisture you put into it, of course, depends on what's in there already. And in winter, when it's bone dry, you've got to slather on the water, stack it up and get ready to print. But in, in summer, in the rainy season, it's halfway there. And some days, you know, when you sit down to print, the paper is so moist, you could actually print on it already. This is a stack of paper ready for printing. This will be going to Mitamura-san. Actually, this is a bit newsworthy. Mitamura-san, he's one of the printers in town. He's not a printer that we've trained here. He's one of the printers in town, maybe about 10 years younger than me. I'm 72. He must be... 60, 62, somewhere around there. We've been hiring him for the past few years. He, he's, uh, he's doing work for us. And his daughter wants to learn. He came to me a few months ago, brought her along. She wants to uh, follow daddy's footsteps. Can we help? So we are. We've diverted funds from our Patreon campaign over to her. We're paying her. He's teaching her at the moment over there. And once she gets to a little bit of a more stable level, She'll be coming over here at least one or two days a week to spend time with our printers here. We've talked about this before. Sponsored by our Patreon funds, training premium funds. What are they doing out there? A couple taking... What were they taking pictures in the background? I don't know, maybe the Korean restaurant was in the background. I don't know. Anyway, two printers are taking their paper out. One is Aimi san, and she's finishing up the nickel print, and Atalan san's nickel. Might be finished this weekend. I don't know. I don't think they were shooting the lamppost. It only works from this direction. Okay, we have a package of prints received this morning from Kawai san. 
our young lady printing up in Nagano Prefecture. She lives in Nagano, doesn't, we don't ever see her in town. She's finished 80 copies of a print and we have been desperate for this one. We've been out of it in the shop for weeks now. People ask for it, where's the such and such? And they're like, I'm sorry, we're out of it. And they're like, when will it be back? So these are going to get checked as soon as I finish the stream today. My priority job will be to check these and get them into the shop. Or get the first batch of them into the shop. You've seen these before. This is not a new print. Da, da, da. 80 more copies. 80 more copies. She is so good at this. So. Someone's going to say, oh, this one again. Every couple of months, I open one of these packages and we see this, you know, she's a real pro. How would you feel? You know, you've done this. There's 26 impressions on this. You've got it right, the pink just right, the blue just right, on 80 sheets of paper. You've got them all right. You sent them off to Dave. He says, thank you. You get paid for it. Then your next job comes. Then your next job comes and your next job comes. And maybe it's six weeks has passed, eight weeks has passed. She opens a box from me and she says, and she, it's the same one again. How do you feel? She's a professional, so her job is to print. But if we push them too hard with the same picture again and again and again, they're humans, you know, she's a human being. She's got to at some point say, oh, Dave, please, not again. That's the nature. Give her the wave next. Well, she and I have a, have a dance about that. She just did the wave about three weeks ago. So she won't be getting the wave just yet. <coughs> they do understand down at the base of it that this is their job. It's a repetitive job. Yeah, you're a mailman. You can't get tired of letters. Is it the same thing? Walking around the city delivering letters into the same mailboxes. You go the next day, same time, same mailboxes, different package. Well, I guess all jobs are like this. My streaming job is like this, right? Eight o'clock, turn the button on, say good morning. Looks cloudy today. Today's work will be this carving. I guess we're all in the same boat. You're an accountant, you're a school teacher. My God, a school teacher, it's September again. Another crowd of new faces. It's the nature of our, our economy, isn't it? And we do try and mix it up. We're really careful not to give the same printers the ones that have the most trouble or the ones that make the most money. Some prints will make a lot more money for printers than others. The time is money calculation. So we have to spread them around. I don't know. Is it any different than what you do? I don't know. Anyway, my job today is to check these. She's already done the embossing. You know, you see me do the embossing with Kubota, but uh, she's done the embossing herself. So all I have to do is check these. And the paper will start packing. The first prints from that batch will be in the shop by about 10.30. Okay, what's happening today? We'll be carving. There will be a show and tell. I have a package to open. I don't see any green tape. I have a package to open. We have another funny little thing to show at show and tell time. Or maybe halfway along. Remind me halfway along to show you what this is. It's a funny one. I don't, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what to do with these. I know your answer, but I don't know what to do with them. The print, the one we had before, this was called Fuji from Tago Bay, if, if that's the question. Somebody's asking, what's the print called? Fuji from Tago Bay. It's in our catalog. Get to work. Get to work. Get to work. Get to work. So this question, if water gets on these thin sheets, will they warp and leak? Can they be saved in such situations? Are you talking about the prints or the blocks or, or I'm sorry, are you talking about the prints themselves? 
Will they warp and leak? Can they be saved? I'm not sure what you're asking. I'm sorry. The prints. Someone asked about the prints themselves. We make the prints wet. The paper is moistened before we do the printing. So water getting on these sheets wouldn't specifically hurt them. We've had streams where we put some of these prints in a bath. She dried them off before sending to me. As long as it was clean water, if I dropped this in a bathtub, I could pick it up. If I flatten it carefully and dry it carefully, you would never know anything has happened. If you spill a cup of coffee on it, you've got a problem. Water per se does not hurt these prints. Some types of pigment are water soluble. You can't take any Japanese print from any era and dump it in water. There's no general rule like that. But the kind of prints we make are made in water. How many blocks are left? There will be one face after this. There will be a couple of red patches on the fish. So this is the second to last block here. Okay, for those who don't know what's about to go on, if you're new at this stream, I'm about to spend four or five minutes making a lot of noise. I'm going to hammer away at this block, clearing out some of the unneeded wood. It's going to be noisy for a few minutes. And then we will get back to being quiet. Be careful with your headphones. We have limiters, compressors, etc. on the audio, so it should be okay. But it's going to be noisy. Doesn't work one way, doesn't work the other way.
Okay, what we'll do, instead of going around the whole thing, making noise for half an hour, let's do this. I'll just finish this corner right now. We'll do the same thing. We start with the first corner, clearing, cleaning. Now we'll do clearing, cleaning. So let me finish this little bit right here. Okay, I think that'll do it for this little bit. Let's do that. Okay, we'll switch to quieter mode while I clean off this. That won't take long. It'll just take a few minutes. Then we'll have to switch back to noisy for this one. So we'll do it in a back and forth system today. <laughs> Let's get the camera. Oh, there's something else I meant to mention. There's a bunch of things actually to talk about today. Anthony, is Uncle Ernie in the chat today? I forget his exact handle. It's Uncle Ernie 88 or something like this. Uncle, are you here, Uncle Ernie? If you're here, you know my question. No response here. Oh, he is here. Okay, Uncle Ernie, sent, you sent me the image last night in the email. Can we show this? Is it okay to, to uh, no, pop that up? I, I prepared it on my desktop. Is it okay in a few minutes when we take a break here from this carving? Can we show that thing and talk about it? Yes, yes. Okay, I thought so, but I thought I'd better check. Now that we've teased you, Uncle Ernie last night sent me an image. Maybe he can link to it so that you guys can see this and have a look before I talk about it. Send me an image uh, last night, uh, this morning, relevant to our show and tell yesterday about the eight views of Lake Biwa. The one that we saw in our show and tell yesterday. Yesterday, I mean last stream. Oh, good morning, good morning, Chicago San. Hello, whoa. She's on her way upstairs. The paper is out. I didn't forget. She's never quite sure because from her point of view, I'm a little bit unreliable. Namely, if I forget once, I hear about it for a year, but whatever. No, it's not Sadako. It's in Ishikawa San. Sadako should be here in about an hour from now, 9, 10 or so. This is Ishikawa-san, one of our top printers here. What's she printing? She's printing... Uh, did I take the wrong packages of paper out today? I might have taken the wrong packages out. I took out the paper for Aimi-san for Nikko print. I took out the paper for Dei-chan for the... For the Traditional sailing boat. I hope I took her paper out. I might be misremembering. I look at the red dots. This happens early in the morning. It happens about 5.30. There's yellow dots on the freezer. I look at the yellow dot through my blurred, misty 5.30 eyes. Red dot, Ishikawa height pull out, Ishikawa's paper. I may have been, I may be okay. I don't really know. No, she won't come down and tell me. She wouldn't disturb the stream. I'll find out when I go upstairs after the stream. 
Do I trust the 5.30 day if I don't remember? I mean, part of it, there is a built-in excuse. You know, son, it was 5.30 in the morning, you know? 5.30 in the morning! But still, I should get it right. I think I did. I think I did. I don't know. I have to live with that doubt now for the next hour. <laughs> She's printing the uh, Crow on Shrine Gate, the item number one in our catalog. And that's, again, that's a repeat. And this is at her request. It's the same sort of story I told you before. Uh, we had the same print going back again and again and again and again to one of the printers. This time, Ishikawa-san, she did a batch of the Crow on Shrine Gate. She did about 60 copies about six weeks ago. And boom, 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 they're all gone. Literally, they're all gone. There's nothing left in the shop now. The staff turned it off on the website. This happened a few days ago. So I went upstairs and I'm looking around to the three printers there. I've got this problem and I held up the print and she said, they're gone already? All the prints I made last week are gone? And I said, yes. And she said, can I do some more? Because for her, the repetition wasn't such a negative as the preparation. She had all the color pots still there. She remembered what to do. She was eager to do it. She could do it more quickly the second time than the first time. So she said, can I do some more? And I'm like, let me think about it. Of course, I said, of course, thank you, thank you, thank you. Not only on top of that, she did her own paper sizing. So all I had to do was nothing. Just stand back and let her get to it. So that's what she's doing now. I'm trying to play back in my mind the 5.30 scene. I opened the fridge. What did I pull out of the fridge? The freezer. I can't remember it. It was all the days. I was half awake, half asleep. I'll report back to you. I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. It's also, you know, uh, at this time of year actually, it's not a tragedy. If it turns out that I pulled the wrong package out and didn't get her package out, in the middle of winter, it's awful because the environment is so cold, it takes a long, long time to unfreeze one of those packages of paper. But at this time of year, you pull out the paper, throw it on the counter, and my God, 15, 20 minutes later, it's defrosted. It also depends how thick they've made their package, how many sheets of newspaper and stuff are in there. And if it's a thick, heavy package, like Dave always uses quite a lot of newspaper compared to these guys. So my packages, like not I do this every day, but my packages take a longer time to defrost.
Actually, someone's asking about the Tago Bay print. Okay, uh, now that I know the prints are here, I should, of course, just a sec. I can do it right now, one sec. Go to the manager page here, catalog, edit the catalog. Edit an existing item. Uh, Tago Bay, what's the number? Itone. Fuji from Tago Bay, it's number 278. Move to the next step. Change it from reprinting to available. Okay, Tago Bay is now available online. Thanks for reminding me, Mr. Co Kobe Beef, was it you? Hi, thank you very much. So I'll be inspecting them today. The packing will happen this afternoon, so there's no reason not to turn it on now. So it's now available online. End of the sales comment here. Thanks. Thanks for the reminder. I know somebody could ask, I haven't inspected them yet. How do I know they're going to be okay for sale? I mean, I mean, come on. She's sending me 80 prints here. There will be two or three that have a cut corner, but they will be, of course, available uh, done properly. You know. Thanks for the reminder, sir. The real Mr. Kobe Beef next door, you know, he and I now have this little dance. He's doing okay, but not great. You know, it's never full. It's also never empty in the evenings, you know. During the day, it's empty lots, but uh, during the evenings, there's so many people walking up and down the street, and most of the other restaurants are jammed. So he does get business, he's never empty. But it's never full, you know, and uh, when I go out after, we, we shut the shop at 5.30, staff's all gone by six. So somewhere usually between 6.30 and seven, Dave heads out, Dave heads out to find his dinner somewhere. And I come down from upstairs, the shop is already locked up, I've got my newspaper in my hand ready to read with dinner. I stand outside the door at the bottom here. I lock the door, then I look left and I look right. Where will I go for dinner tonight? And many, many times, not every day, but many, many times, he's standing outside his place. He does touting. Kobe beef, Kobe beef, hi, come on in, tasty Kobe beef. He stands out there lightly and gently touting. They have a little table out there with a menu card on it. And he says, come and look at the menu, tasty Kobe beef, visiting Japan. Hello, will you try beef? He tries to speak a little bit of English. Anyway, I come down the stairs, stand outside the door, and clearly I'm heading out for dinner. So I look at him, nod my head, how you doing this evening? We don't speak to each other at this point, it's just nodding. We've seen each other all day long, back and forth. And he's doing his touting, Kobe beef, Kobe beef. And he sees me and he knows I'm going for dinner. And I walk past every time. <laughs> I'm not, I am not ever in my life, ever, not if it was the last restaurant open in a saksa, am I ever going to eat there. Give me a break. Spider-Man lights flashing, lights flashing, a special, they put a red carpet on the floor. <laughs> I, oh. He does not ask, he doesn't want the refusal, and that would be unbearable if he said, Ikagadeska, or if he said, won't you have dinner here? He wouldn't do that because that would be too much pressure, because that would then be crossing the bounds of what's acceptable. Because like, I'm going to say no, and now we're in hostile territory. So he never will actually physically ask me about this. Someone says, what if it's the best Kobe beef? Yeah, give me a break. How many now? I, there was another new one open the other day. How many are there here in this district? I keep meaning to walk around and make a map. The same franchise, exactly the same franchise now within, let me pin this. Let's say two minute walk, not even two minute, one and a half minute walk. If I drew a circle around this shop, one and a half minute walk, how many of that franchise Kobe beef shops do you think are in there? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about this. While, give me a minute while I'm carving. Put the pin in and I'm going to say about 90 seconds walk. In other words, to get to the subway station, to get to Tawaramachi subway station, Asakusa subway station, uh, Tsukuba Express, 
in that circle around here, how many do you think there are? I'm going to count this here while I'm, while I'm. How many do you get? I get eight. Eight at the moment. Hold your breath because it'll be nine by tomorrow. I get eight. Tom 1060 says it. So <laughs> have somebody got it? Somebody, somebody's got it more than there are cows in Kobe. Now I gotta be careful. I'm speaking in public here. So and I have no knowledge of this. How many kilograms of beef are produced in Kobe every year? and how many are sold at this stupid chain every day. Any restaurant that needs rows of flashing lights and a Spider-Man character up there to attract people is not going to have food worth eating, period. This is not any great insight from me here. I'm also very curious about one thing. If you're in any country, whatever, if you're if you're in America and you're gonna open a, a McDonald's franchise or something, you know, you, you contact the company, you do the deal, you do all the paperwork, you put your money on the table or whatever it is happens, and you open a franchise restaurant for something. You, you name it, doesn't matter. This is not uh, specific to Japan, everywhere. Starbucks, whatever, you know, you start your, your deal with them. You get business up and running. Then you come to work one day and you realize that kitty corner across the street from you, the big company has franchised somebody else to open the same thing. You know, kitty corner Starbucks. This is the classic thing on both sides of the intersection. There is one here. At what level does it become dishonest? These guys open their franchise and there is now eight, as I said, within a couple of minutes walk here. At what level do you think, um, like, uh, what's going on here, you know? Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe those other franchises help you. Maybe it's not competition. The tourist walking around sees this all day long. Kobe beef, Kobe beef, yeah, man, Kobe beef, not sure. Kobe beef, Kobe beef. You know, tell you what, I think I kind of like to eat Kobe beef. Maybe it's like advertising. So seeing all the other franchise ones, and at some point the tourist gives up and says, okay, okay, I give up, I'll eat Kobe beef. I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's all in the contracts. I mean, anybody now opening another one, they know the story here. They know the story, you know. The convenience stores are the same thing. So Lawson on every corner and all that kind of stuff, you know. I guess it's a known thing, you know. The convenience stores, it'll be a question of how much need is there. How many people are going to buy those, you know, drinks and sandwiches and, and whatever it is they sell. What's the demand in that area from this population? The beef thing is a bit different, I think. Anyway, sorry to talk about the same thing all the time. But it's there. It's part of our life. It's right there, you know.
Okay, I guess that's the next corner now done, right? We did the first corner here yesterday. Now we've done this next corner. As I said, we're really doing it the wrong quote, the, the funny way here. Normally a carver like myself, you grab one tool, you do the whole job. You grab your cutting tool, you cut all the lines. We did that. You then grab your chisels, you clear away all the garbage for the whole thing. And then you come back and do what I just did. But sort of to break up our streams here and make them a little bit more palatable, we've done it in sections. So the next one now, I'll be grabbing the persuader and clearing out this. But before I do, something to show you. Uncle Ernie, last night, or this morning, sent me an email with a picture. The other day, at the, in the show and tell, we discovered, this was unknown to me, we discovered a print that was in the show and tell, turned out to be a full set of the eight views omihake. I'll put them vertically here so we can see it in the, in the screen all at once. It's a single double page book spread and it has all of the eight views scenes compressed into one. We have descending geese, we have night rain, we have snow, we have returning sails, we had, it says here, clearing weather, we had uh, evening bell, we have, uh, where are we here? Uh, evening glow, and we have autumn moon. And the autumn moon didn't exactly exist. There seems to be no circle in the sky or in a reflection in the water. But the point of view, we had all eight views in the same thing. Uncle Ernie, I guess when this came about some time ago, Uncle Ernie came up with an interesting idea. Where is it? He created this. I think it's a few years ago. It says 2020, so it's four years ago, just the beginning of the pandemic. It reflects a couple of memes from our stream at the time. We talked about the shoe lady, a lady who walked by. We never saw her, but we heard the sound of her shoes. The twins who lived down the street used to come by each morning. They are now going to a different school at a different time. And Uncle Ernie put together eight views of cats all in one piece. And the challenge is, can you find, step one, can you find eight cats? And number two, can you find the eight themes? <coughs> and Ernie-san, I, I can find eight cats, but I can't quite find all the eight themes. We've got a list of the themes here, for those of you who don't remember them. Evening snow, it's night snow or evening snow. And I think we have that, the side picture that's on the, uh, no, those are stars, that's not snow. Oh, evening snow, it must be the ice cream. The white ice cream being given to the kids it must be the evening snow. Night rain is a little bit more problematic. Is Ernie still here for commenting here? Night rain, to me, either it's in the pattern in her skirt, the rain falling, or it's the drip of the tap. There's a little tap at the bottom of the ice cream cart. And I think that would be maybe water dripping, which is perhaps the idea for, for evening rain, night rain. Then we have evening bell. Lots of these are evening, evening, evening. We have evening bell, and of course we have a bell on the cat in the foreground. Descending geese. Descending geese, I guess this is our cat up in the top left corner playing with the leaves or blossoms, whatever it is, which are descending in the way that it looks like geese. We have returning sails. And I guess returning sails, it's the iconic cones on the street. They look like ships coming back into port. Autumn moon, that's an easy one. It's right there on the ice cream cart. Clearing weather. I guess that's the uh, pat, pat, picture that's painted on the shutter across the street. We have a sun breaking through out of the clouds. If you're curious about the eighth cat, or well, people are finding it, the eighth cat is, it's the keychain on the backpack. I guess that's the eighth cat. But the one that puzzles me still, the theme of evening glow. This scene happens in the morning. Our streams are always in the morning and the, the lady is walking east. So any sunshine coming in here is a morning sunshine. So I'm not sure how Ernie has hidden evening glow in here. Well, the sun and the shutter, I was thinking that's clearing weather. You know, the sun coming out from behind the clouds. 
Evening glow is the phone screen. That's an idea. The glow from the phone. Okay, okay. That's what Ernie's called. Okay, there you are. Or there we have it. From the man himself. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry not to be able to get that. I guess my my poetic, uh, my ability to catch poetic nuance is not there. So, anyway, Ernie, thank you very much. This is really, really cool. Can you pop a link in? Is there a link somewhere where people can see this or download it or, or look at it? Whatever. I think Uncle Ernie has an Instagram. You must have put it on there, you know? Anyway, please feel free to pop a link in here. Thank you very much for this. It was real fun to see this in my mail this morning. Good fun. Thank you again, Ernie Sat. <laughs> the memes go round and the memes go round and the memes go round. The shoe lady still is out there. She takes a different route each day. She takes a different time each day. And she no longer wears noisy shoes. She wears quiet shoes. I don't see her every day at all. And uh, Most days I'm at the pool from 6.50 to 7.40. And it's near the end of that time now. She comes earlier than she used to. She comes about 7.25, 7.30. She doesn't come by this street. She's altered her route a little bit. And the only time I see her is when the pool is closed for, say, uh, a cleaning day. And when it's not a national holiday. So she still does come to work. And I happen to be out there maybe going to get a cup of coffee or something. So I rarely see her now. It's like once a year or something when the, the stars line up. And the twins, I, I never see. Never see. They are now middle school kids, and middle school kids, that's it. Normal human beings never see middle school kids. They are at school. It's like 24-7. They are at school or busy with their club activities or classroom activities. Okay, a little bit more persuading. Back to the noisy stuff for a few minutes. Where's my hammer? Do I have kids myself? I have two daughters and four grandchildren. No family living with me at the moment. Not at all. They're all grown up and far away. Yeah, four, I have a grand, my God, my grandson, oldest grandson. How old is he now? 17, 16? If he's not careful, I'll have great grandchildren soon. <laughs> yeah, I'm a granddaddy. Okay, bit of noise again for a few minutes.
Oh, something else I meant to mention. I know it's not really relevant to most of you guys out there. It's just a bit of news in passing. When I was at the 7-Eleven this morning, picking up the newspaper, it's the weekend, so I need to get the New York Times newspaper so I can do the puzzle. I can do the Sunday puzzle. And I picked up the 7-Eleven, the newspaper at 7-Eleven this morning. And while I was in there, two people, two people. One of them is a neighbor. He runs a bar down the street. The other person is somebody I don't even know. They said, saw you last night. And I'm like, what do you mean saw me last night? And they said, you know, TV, TV, TV. The guy who I spoke to from the bar next door, actually, he, he's... Uh, he actually can't speak. He's had an operation on his throat. So he spoke to me today in gestures. This was the first one. So I'm in line at 7-Eleven. He's there. He was two or three people in line in front of me. He turned around from doing his payment, saw me, and starts to make a gesture. And I'm like, I don't know anything about it at this point. I've told you now it's a TV thing. But at this point, I didn't know anything about what's going on. So he turns around and he makes a gesture like this. And I'm like... I know this guy, you know, we, we say hello to each other, but he can't speak and explain what's going on, but like, what is he trying to tell me? And it turned out, he was trying to explain. So he comes closer and he writes the character for Te on his hand. Te, Te, Te. I said, Te, 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 And he says, yeah, 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 yeah. So then I realized it must be the news every program. So we were on, uh, we were on TV. <laughs> I'm a square. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Karen, you're fired. And then it was all, all became clear a few minutes later when I came out of the 7-Eleven and somebody else stopped me and he said, saw you on TV last night. It's all in Japanese. So, so we were on a news program. Um, it's news every. It's a T TBS, is it? No, no. Nippon TV. Nippon Terebi. I can't even remember. I don't have a TV. And it's not a program about us. It was a program about Miyako Dori Publishing, the people who make the Shin Hunger Prints using the lasers. I guess there's a program about them. And the team came to here to interview me because we have his prints in the shop and what do I think about all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. So I guess that aired last night. And we had asked the TV people, let us know when it's airing so we can tell our fans and blah, blah, blah. And they said, no, no, we never do this. What if it was canceled? People would be disappointed. And like, what are you doing this for? Anyway. So I'll probably, I'll probably get an email or a letter from her today saying the broadcast is now finished. Thank you for your cooperation. The guy, it's, you know, it's Tonchan. There's uh, when you go to Hopi Dori here, the street, you know, the bar street just around the corner. A lot of the bars there are kind of like, really, do you want to go there? I don't know. And a few of them are still run in a family step. They will be the family who got the permission to use that space in 1950, 55 or 56, somewhere around there. They got permission to use this space for the bars, and uh, this is a family guy, so he's got his bar there, and he must be, maybe he's the grandson of the guy, or would he be the son? The person who got permission to use that space would be 1950s. So I guess this guy's his son, maybe his grandson, I don't know, I can't tell. He has a pork, pork cutlet restaurant, Tong. he calls himself Tonchan. Ton is a casual name for pork in Japanese. Tonkatsu. Tonjiru. But that wood grain, man oh man, the wood grain's awful here. Ugh. Both ways terrible grain. Dangerous both ways. So how's our time? 8.52, we're okay. We have a show and tell, a good, 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 big, fat show and tell. And before show and tell, we have a couple of other interesting, curious prints to look at.
socks. No, your socks are okay. It's, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, overdo that meme. I know this is a normal show and tell. They're good fun prints. I think they are really interesting. It's an item I found on auction, and I will be keeping for the collection because we don't have these prints yet in the collection. But it's not a life-changing experience, or, you know. So let's not overdo the sock thing. <laughs> Are you looking for old clips of the shoe lady people here? I don't know. <laughs> lefty, I'm a total lefty. I'm a total lefty for everything. I kick left, right, left. Do I do everything left? <laughs> I was going to say something I shouldn't say. <laughs> Someone says you're missing your Corvid comrades. They're out there. Haven't they been calling this morning? The outside mic is on. It's not turned up all that much. I hear now the uh, audio from the Ninja. 
there's a voice droning in the background. That's the audio track for the Ninja advertising video that they're playing again and again and again and again and again and again and again on their screen outside the Ninja shop. And once the town gets up and running and car noise comes and stuff, we can't hear it, but because it's still so quiet this morning, it's intrusive, you know. And at night, it's... Don't get me started. Okay, I think that's it for the noise making. How's our time? 8.58. Yeah, so John's got one. At least I can't hear the donkey song. Yes. Thank heaven for small mercies. No, thank heaven for large mercies. What John's talking about is, uh, I guess you probably know, down the end of the street there, we have a Don Quixote store. You can see flashing lights today, I think. They were at the beginning. Yeah, there's lights flashing. They play donkey jingles. There's one or two donkey jingles. And they play them 24 hours a day. 24 hours a day. They're never closed. And luckily, we are far enough away. Well, it's not really luckily, because if it was audible here, there would be the police would be involved at some point. But uh, don't, don't, yeah, you can, you can, don't, don't get me started. Don't get me started. <laughs> Someone's asking, is our shop only open at certain times of year? No, we're open all year long. We're closed Tuesdays. Our closing day is Tuesday. And don't get confused. Jed Henry's online shop is only open now and then. So people keep hearing the Ukiyo-e Hero shop is closed. It's not us. Our physical Asakusa shop is open all year long except Tuesdays and we close the first, second and third of January for the New Year holiday. For the rest of it, we are open all year long. Okay, now, we've got some more carving to do. There is a show and tell, but as I said, a quick little something extra. A quick little something. I'm going to zoom out here. We can't see all of these, but it doesn't matter. We've had, I cleaned up my desk. I'm telling you, there's stuff that's, that's coming up. Those little prints I showed you the other day, I found them cleaning up my desk. And yesterday, Watanabe-san and I had, well, for me it was fun, for her it was no fun. I'm cleaning up my desk, I find some stuff, I take it down to whatnot. san do you know where we can sort of file this, or what can we do with this? And she, the first time I came in, she said, okay Dave, uh, yeah, I think we can uh, file this somewhere. Okay, no problem, no problem. Then 10 minutes go by, I bring in two or three more things. whatnot san can you maybe help me, where, where can we put the stuff, you know? And she now gets the idea of what's going on. And it became a lot, not so much fun for her. And in fact, I had to stop because I can't just dump my junk onto somebody else's desk. Then they're going to just dump it on somebody else's desk and away we go. So anyway, these, this package of prints came up. It wasn't just a single package. There were, there were a bunch of them scattered all over my desk. I know what must have happened. I must have bought these on auction. Oh, I don't even remember. Ages and ages and ages ago. Looks like... Japanese woodblock prints, nicely made prints. They're a bit foxed, but we have, they're a bit of an old fashioned style. We have clearly these the originals are carved prints here. We have two levels of hair here. Very nicely done. The key block is printed in a soft gray with a separate black over top of this thing. Very, very, very nicely done. I was thinking, wow, this is cool. When I saw the close-up pictures on the, on the auction site, I just grabbed this. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but it's clearly... There's a little tiny bit of color misregistration there, but that can't be helped. So why am I showing this to you now? What's the problem? Why was I trying to get rid of this and dump it on Wat Nabisan's desk? Very, very nicely carved. Nice overlapping hair. Beautifully done. The problem is, they're not woodblock prints. 
This is an early form of insatsu. This is commercial printing. These are not wood blocks. And I guess they're about a hundred years old, I think, and they are a very, very early form of trying to replicate woodblock prints in commercial printing. They've done a wonderful, wonderful job. And it fooled me on the auction pictures all that time ago, absolutely. But they are not woodblock prints. Actually, how they did them, I don't know, because some of the blocks show little deviations that from carving. You know, this is not stuff that has been drawn or photographed. These seem to be carved blocks. A little bit of misregistration where the green block is done. And I think the key blocks may have been carved, but printed in a printing press. And the color blocks are all done with some kind of spot color printing process. There's no barren marks on the back, nothing to do with this. There's no evidence of paper being moistened. These are not washi paper. These are a commercial grade paper. It's an early form of color printing. It's not half tone. There's no screens here. Every color you see here is a spot color. So there must have been a different, uh, I'm going to say block, a different plate for every one of the colors you see here. So they're cool, but uh, like I didn't want these. I tried to give them to Watanabe-san. She says, can I sell them in the shop online? I said, no, 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 no. That would spoil our thing, you know. We only sell woodblock prints. We can't sell this stuff. So she doesn't want them. I don't want them. And they're now homeless here, shuttling back and forth. Put them on somebody's desk. No, nobody wants them here. I don't know lithography. I really don't know. I'm not an expert on that. There's no screening. There's no, you know, I put them under the microscope and there's no dot, 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 dot showing a halftone screen. So everything seems to be done with flat color. But I don't know how they did it. Maybe we should just keep them as samples of early, early Meiji era, uh, no, early Meiji Taisho era uh, machine printing. There also seems to be no overlay. Colors don't seem to overlay other colors. It's hard to tell. Okay, it's 9.05. Ten more minutes of light carving before we get to our show and tell. few days as I keep cleaning up, digging towards the bottom of my desk there, you know, all kinds of stuff's going to turn up. Who's this? Oh, it's of course, it's article time. Morning, morning. Is it muggy out there or not so bad?
Do you see the prints stacked up on the table there? Yeah. What happened was it's the, it's the first of the month and the Yoshida family put up some of their prices effective as of the end of the month, first of the month. So last night the staff had to pull those off the, off the shop <coughs> and they need new labels being put on. It should all be ready there. Tiko Sam prepared everything last night, ready for the Saturday staff to have a go at it. So, I can't see yeah. Here okay. Later. Yeah, I'll go over it with you. Yeah, so. There was a, a, our own prints. We control our own pricing, of course, but we also have prints in the shop here from the Yoshida family. Uh, reprints of Toshi Yoshida prints and not reprints current prints by Tsukasa Yoshida, the son, the grandson of Hiroshi. And I guess they've been getting a pinch or something recently, but they gave us a, a notification about a month ago that from June the 1st, they were going to be raising their prices. So last night in the shop, the staff was getting ready for this. They pulled all the prints out of the shop last night. They're all stacked up on a counter and they're getting new price labels this morning. It's no big deal. It's just up about 5% on some of Tsukasa-san's prints. We have them in the shop here on a consignment basis. So the Yoshida prints that are here in the shop, uh, there's not our choice what price they sell for. We, of course, we our own prints, we price them as we want to, so. What's that? Something new. I have never seen it. Hmm? This print, can you see? It should be there. It should be in... The, the vertical one. Yeah, yeah. It might be... Uh, it's an a, I think that's uh, the B4 size, the medium size packaging. Ah.
I guess that's the order you just pulled, right? The music is playing later. <laughs> well, you got the order, right? That's the same one? Yeah. Or is there another one I don't know about? Donna? No, there's another one. <laughs> the music, we talked about it before. It's when the staff comes in, they have to wake up the computer in the shop, and any overnight orders that happened on the website overnight the shop staff has to pull them out of the stock here before we open the shop because we wouldn't want to sell the same thing twice. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the prints in our flea market are unique prints. We only have one. And if somebody online has bought it, then we have to get out of the shop quickly so nobody else can grab it. Okay, last 15 minutes of the stream. Let's go to our show and tell. And it's a rather large item today, so I'm going to need to get rid of our flask here. Let's see. I gotta move this. One sec. Are we good to go? Okay, here we go. It's a package we uh, received from Yahoo Auctions. I saw this a couple of weeks ago. And if all goes well, if the person gave accurate photographs of the prints, this should be a very, very nice little print set. Let's have a look. Sometimes they're pretty creative with the way they take pictures and we get fooled. But I think we're okay with this one. Come on, you come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Let's do this this way. Actually, I think that layer one was the last layer. This is the object itself. This is how the product, I believe, was shipped originally. Let's have a look at this. Yes, so this is not part of the outside wrapping. Water stain. This is a print set that's been hanging around for a while. Let's get rid of the cover. Thank you. I think we'll be tossing that one out. And look at this little touch here. What we have here this is a woodblock print stuck onto the front cover of the package. This is a package of prints from Adachi, and it's a set I've never seen, and I think it's maybe the 1960s or 1970s. We'll learn more when we get inside. And it's a set of what we call kacho e ka ka flowers birds a picture and it's a genre usually in the vertical thin format and everything has to have a bird and or a flower and frequently a reference to a poem we know what's going on here right this is a Chinese poem and we've been studying this now recently we're going to learn more about this it's four three four three is the physical structure of the particular type of Chinese poem Dave's grinning here Sadako's grinning at me waiting for me to get in trouble We've been learning a bit more about this. Anyway, let's get inside. What we have is a set of 12 prints in the kacho genre, published by Adachi in the post-war period. It's a set I've never laid my hands on before. And with Adachi prints of this era, there's a huge risk that there's going to be a ton of foxing because they didn't use good packaging material. So let's cross our fingers. Is there a date on there, Sadako? Can you see there? There's probably no date, show. No. 
No. Ah, no, no, no. No, just a date address. and a telephone number and address. Yeah, okay. If you can take that away. Thank you very much. And we here have here the Adachi Hanga Kenkyujo, the Adachi uh, Research Institute for the Study of Japanese Prints, is what I think they call it in English. And let me first quickly just see if we've got a date here. Most of the explanation is Japanese. Oh, they have an English one as well. No date. Sorry about that. Let's look at some prints. Cross your fingers. Shimi ga aru ka nai ka. Oh, look at that. That's a cover. Look at this. I've never seen this set, you know. Here's another. No date. No date. No date, no, no date. Uh, we don't have Kubota. Mm. So this is pre-1971. Kubota came in 71. This is Murata and Suzuki. So actually those, the names of those printers were dated. My best guess said we're looking at 1965, 1966, somewhere around there. And Adachi, when they do it nice, they do it nice. So they're glued in, mm. can't be helped. When they're careless, they're like it's what's the story? When she's good, she's good, and when she's bad, she's horrible. When they do a nice job, they really do do a nice job. So this is from Adachi's best post-war years before they started to decay. We've got uh, embossing. I'm not sure if you can see it here. There's embossing on the birds. The flowers are also embossed. Beautiful, nice touch on the gradations. Very, very nice job. This came up on Yahoo Auction a couple of weeks ago. It wasn't well displayed, it wasn't well photographed, and it was a bit of a risk bidding for it. But it looks like they're very nicely done. We have Kingfisher, and what is this? Hydrangea, Sadako? Yes, hydrangea. hydrangea. Ajisai, the kind of ajisai. Soka. And like I could read that, not. Is it not the kanji for ajisai? No. Oh, oh, oh. Ajisai. So. It's a nice set, you know. It's not masterfully printed. We have a bit of not so nice printing on the background, but it's very, very nicely done. The idea of Hiroshige and, and Hokusai, the way they depicted animals and stuff. There's endless discussion back and forth between the two. Hokusai was the older guy. He's noted for drawing and anything in a masterful way. The idea that he could catch anything. If it's not the right shape for Fuji, it's because he chose to make it not the right shape. Okay, he could do whatever he wanted. This guy now, Hiroshige, comes along. He's quite different. He lived in an era when we have no photography. There was no chance to catch a bird in motion. You could see a dead bird on the ground. You could see a bird as it stood perched. But as far as a bird flying, how do you catch the shape of the wings and where they go? Whatever, you're not supposed to say this, but I really don't think he was very good at this. <laughs> I don't know. The mood is there. I guess that's what's important. The mood and the feeling and everything else is there. But see, you, know, you have to think, if you were an art teacher, and one of your students handed this in as the assignment. What would you say? You know, would you say, uh, "Okay, that's a masterwork," or would you say, "Maybe you could go back and you know try studying this a little bit more"? I don't know. I shouldn't. Whatever. The prints are beautiful. They are really nicely done. Does it matter how accurate the things are depicted? I mean, obviously, that's not the point. Accuracy was not the game. This is a nicely done set. It's the same thing at the top again. We're learning a bit more about this. There's a Chinese poem on here. And there was a gentleman in here about a week ago, last Monday. And he knows more about, he knows lots and lots about this Chinese poetry. That's his bag. He's living in China, studying this. And this is his field. And he was able to point out some things to us that I didn't know. We have a rough translation of this poem. And it talks about uh, white birds 
uh, on the rice fields looking like a thousand flakes of snow. It's sort of the literal translation of these. White birds, rice field, thousand flakes of snow. And then it suddenly changes mood to yellow bird on branch one flower. And I guess what we have here is it's just, it's a little bit similar to the Japanese stuff where they just dump ideas on the table and you make images in your own mind of this. It's a bird here and maybe it's, a, if you imagine birds in the winter coming down where the rice fields were, picking up the leftover rice after the people have threshed it, then it looks like snow in the rice fields. But what we did learn was the Chinese poems come in four. White birds on the rice fields, four characters, a thousand flakes of snow, three characters, yellow bird on branch, four, and then one uh, something flower, one, one branch flower, three. So the Chinese stuff comes in four, three, four, three. We've all heard about the Japanese poetry, like a haiku or a tanka or whatever. It's a five, seven, five, or five, seven, five, seven, seven, five, all this sort of thing. But we learned a hugely interesting thing. The Japanese poetry doesn't come counted by the number of written characters. It comes counted by the audible syllables. So if you're blind or if you're just listening to a Japanese poem, you hear the five, seven, five rhythm. In China, it doesn't matter how many syllables it takes to say the thing, they go by the physical counting on the drawing. So this is four written characters for the first idea, then three, then four, and then three. Not the audible number of syllables. Now I'm going to go out on a limb here. Maybe Japanese has clearly defined syllables. It's the root base of the language. Every kid learns these. We go the a, i, u, e, o, kaki, ku, ke, ko, sashi, su, se, so. Syllables are defined in Japanese. And to say a word, if I say this lady's name, Sadako, three syllables, Sadako, we've also spelled her name. So to speak a word is to spell it. It's not like English where you can have a spelling bee. There's no spelling bees in Japan. Hi, please spell Sadako. Hi, Sadako. It doesn't work in Japanese. There's no spelling bees. So it's very, very interesting to me. And I learned some of these things for the first time this last week about this. Another Chinese poem. Here we are. I have no idea what this one is. It's four, three, boom. Away you go. He also mentioned something. This gentleman who knew this, he mentioned something very interesting about this, that he was almost certain that Hiroshige, the designer of these pictures, was not the person who would either select or put the poem onto the picture. He mentioned a very common thing that Japanese designers would make a scroll painting, paint the scroll, and then present it to the customer or the client or whatever, gone. And the client themselves would or could grab a brush, take the scroll and put a relevant poem on top of it. So things like this, which were published as woodblock prints, the idea is that Hiroshige would hand in the design, the drawing with some color ideas, the publisher grabs it, takes it over, and inside the publisher's outfit, then people who know something about the literary ideas that are in play would then put an appropriate poem on top of it. So we are seeing, it seems that we are seeing a Hiroshige a created image that has been put together with poems later on. So I'm told, and I can actually believe this, it sounds very, very common sense. We see our first bit of damage here. This one has some foxing. The prints so far have been in very good condition. Look at this one. We've got foxing here and there. For an Adachi set so far, it's not bad. Here we have it. It could have come from the background paper. Where am I? Where's my finger? Could have come from the background paper, could have come from the print itself. We don't know. Hopefully some of the rest are going to be okay. This is famous. We have a version of this in our shop in postcard size. This is so difficult to print. So difficult to get the rich blue here without smashing the fine lines in the middle. This is one of the most difficult prints in our catalog to print. We have again 14 to show. Look at this. I wonder if it's 4343, three, three, but they've laid them out in 14 simply because there was no room. I don't know. I don't know the rules about this at all. But it's 14, which seems to follow the same rule 4343. Three. What's the flower here? Peony? 
chameleon? No, I don't know. What's Subaki. the plan? Subaki chameleon, is it? John was asking me, can I read that last one? No, not at all. Absolutely not at all. But can I read the hanko? I don't know. Etone. No, I'm sorry. I'd have to look this up. Hiroshige used a number of common hanko. The one we, we joke about all the time is his baka hanko, which has an image of a deer and a horse. I don't know, John, how to read this. It will be well known. They're not all Chinese poems. Some of these have clearly poetry in Japanese on them. This is the Yamabuki flower. Look at this. Atenashi Bokashi. Do you see this on the background here? This is really, really rare. Look at this. They put the birds in there, and then there's a cloudy pinkish appearance around the bird. The printer has been told to put a slight pink gradation around the birds to give a glow to them, set them off from the background. Very nicely done. I'm very, very happy with this set. The carving is crisp. The lines are sharp and clear. Good embossing. This is a very, very, very nice set of prints. This one's not going in the shop. This is staying in our collection. He 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 he. All of the major 20th century publishers did this stuff. Takamizawa published endless copies of these Tanzakuban prints. We have many, many in our shop. Yu Yu Do did this same set that we're looking at now. Either they copied Adachi or Adachi copied them, I don't know. Saruka, these are beautifully done. They're so nice. Wow. So nice. The color blends and color balances here. So, again, we have a seven character poem. And only one of them has foxing damage. So I can keep an eye out for that and see if we can replace it. Clean, beautiful, beautiful. What a nice treasure we have today. I said keep your socks on and I guess socks have been okay, but Dave here is very happy to get a good example and in good condition of a set of prints, very nicely made. 1960s, best guess would be 1966. I was 15 years old. I didn't know anything about prints at that time, but whatever. They really have done this. Look at this. It's the same block at the back, but the gradation coming up, brown from the bottom, green from the top, overlapping on the same block. Where to put the borderline? Really, really, really nicely done. Okay, there we go. Thanks, gang. <clears throat> We're at the end of our time now. Today's Saturday. I'll be back here two more days on Monday morning. I will be almost certainly, because I'll be finishing it today, I'll be finished this block by then, and I should be carving the last block, the red spots on the carp. And then after that, those of you who know our job history and what's going on here, you know what I will probably be carving a week from now. It's quite predictable. Okay, let's put up the outside screen. Anything else to mention? We're all good to go? Mm -hmm. Let's sign off. Three, two, one, see you in a couple of days. Thank you very much and bye for now.